we begin. Hello and welcome everyone. Another series Bible lessons we are going to begin this evening. I am honored that you have chosen to come and be with us tonight and I trust that you will be blessed with this study. It is with great privilege that I am able to bring the word of the Lord to you. We're going to begin by prayer tonight, asking God's favor on us as we look for Him, as we consider uh, the Word of God and how it applies to our life. Pray with me if you would. Jesus, we are indebted to you and we're thankful for another opportunity to go to your Word. Lord, it is always a joy and a privilege for us to come to you. Thank you for each one that's listening and watching and following and long tonight. Pray, God, you would lead them in the Word and let them fall in love with you the more they learn about you. In the name of Jesus, put your hand upon us right now and help us, God, as we draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we are going to, over the next few weeks, talk about something that I feel like is very important, very vital in the life of a Christian, and that is spiritual fruit. I'm going to talk about some things that I feel like uh, in the day and age in which we live, we have to understand. We have to, in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits, we must spend time thinking about considering and allowing the Word of God, the power of God, and the Spirit of God to work in us. And in thus doing, we are going to produce fruit. Now, uh, when we produce fruit, of course, that is a direct, significant indication of what is happening on the inside of us. By the fruit that we bear indicates what's going on on the inside as we're growing, as we are into His Word, as we're studying the, the Scriptures, as we're praying, as we're spending time with one another. I'm sure that most of you uh, who are gardeners or who have had fruit trees or had a garden in your life, you understand that uh, all fruit, all trees, all uh, shrubs, bushes, plants, flowering plants, they have a cycle. They, the seed goes to the ground, the seed is, is planted, pushed into the dirt, the soil with its nutrients, with water, uh, begins to germinate and allow the dying of that seed to happen so that the correct amount of magnesium and nitrates and so forth can go into the seed but then with the process of time things begin to happen and that seed comes out of the ground. Now uh, instantaneously you don't have fruit. What you have is you have a representation of the maturing of a seed. Okay, With that seed growing, an example, if you planted an apple tree, it would take many years before you would see the first fruits of that. In fact, uh, a pear tree takes about five years to grow before it will show its first fruits. Um, a plum tree, the same, takes about five years. An apple tree is a little bit less. It's a different type of fruit. Uh, <clears throat> there are some flowering plants that can take 10 to 20 years uh, before they ever show a flower. In fact, there are even some that take a hundred years plus before they show the actual fruit of what is growing inside of that plant. The whole indication here is for you and I to understand that time has to be invested before fruit can show up on the vine, if you will. Now, according to the book of John, chapter number 15, let's read there. I am the true vine, my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. This is a red letter edition of the word 
Jesus Christ speaking here, uh, giving instruction to his followers, to his disciples, uh, giving us understanding that through the word, trying to allow people to grasp, grasp, if you will, the spiritual implications here. You can't do this by yourself. I can't do this by myself. I have to have spiritual anointing, spiritual flow, spiritual connectivity in my life so that I can bear fruit. The indication here that Jesus gives is you're going to be seen and known by fruit. And in fact, the husbandman, which he refers to as, as being the father, will notice if there's fruit or not. And if there's no fruit, if there's a fruit that uh, doesn't please him, if there's things growing on the vine, growing on the branches, if you will, that are contrary to him, it doesn't please him. And in doing so, he will purge it. He will cut it. He will clean it out. Uh, to you and I, that may seem harsh. It may seem like it's not fair. Why can't we just do what we want to do? Why can't we just produce the fruit that we want to produce? Can't we just be something that we want to be and, and it won't bother anybody else? But the truth is, is when you're a follower of Jesus, you're going to have to produce what he puts in you. You, you know very well that the word of God, the spirit of God, the power of God is active and it's alive. There's no way that you could ever really attain a place or a, 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 a situation in life unless you have his spirit manifesting itself in you. You could want to be as good as you can, but it's not enough. You can desire to have everything in control, everything under, under uh, the, the housing, if you will, of you've got this together, your life's perfect, and so forth, but the truth is it's not. The Spirit of God working in you is developing and growing you. According here to John chapter number 15, we see that something is going to happen in you when the Word gets in you, when the power of God gets in you. Things will change. Now with that said, in bearing fruit, we understand that the process has to happen. There has to be something that transforms and changes us and grows us, if you will, from day to day, week to week, year to year. There are four things I want to talk to you about concerning this uh, spiritual fruit. Number one is, according to Matthew chapter 7, wherefore by their fruit shall you know them. Knowing what a person is, you can see what their fruit is about and you can identify them. Again, you know that looking at a, an apple gives clear indication that the tree, the plant that it came from, is indeed an apple tree. Uh, you can say the same about any other fruit. A lemon, for an example, comes from a lemon tree. Spiritually speaking, the same thing applies. If you're a person that your language, your attitude, the indications of how you think and how you process things, how you uh, act around people, how you apply yourself on the job, how you're mean to f people or how you're, you're very kind to them. All of these are indications of the kind of fruit that's in you. And according to Matthew 7, again, wherefore by the fruit, you'll know them. You'll know those that are around you, those that you're listening to, those that you're following, those that you're trying to wrap your mind around who they are and what they're about. You'll know them by fruit. If somebody's kind, you'll notice that and you'll know that that person has something inside of them that makes them to be kind. Also, number two, wisdom, for an example, working in the heart of a person, that comes from two sources. Wisdom, for an example, comes from earth comes from humanity. There's things you can learn. There's things that you can study and you can comprehend. Again, back to fruit. You, you can understand the makeup and the characteristics and, and what this apple needs in order to taste sweet or in order to be a certain color or to be a certain size. You can look at how it is and per noticing that just in humanity, you can understand things about the apple. But the truth is, that type of wisdom only takes you so far in the mind, in carnality, in the flesh. But there's also a heavenly or a spiritual wisdom. There are things that 
you, you may or may not truly comprehend. You haven't studied or you haven't gone to horticulture school. You're, you're not somebody who, who understands how things happen with photosynthesis and the process of growing. But spiritually, you can know things. You can know things about God. You can understand how he operates, how he functions. When you pray and you, you talk to him, you can, in, in yourself, you can understand that everything about what he's doing in your life is producing something positive. Now, wisdom by the world standard, wisdom by the earth's standard, if you will, by humanity, I might not be very smart, very wise, but when it comes to spiritual things, I can indeed understand. Now, how is that known? How is that wisdom manifested? A couple of ways. According to Isaiah, righteousness remains in a fruitful field. When you're doing right things, there's going to be manifestation of a spiritual wisdom that's coming out of you. Also, when righteousness works in a person, they know that they operate in peace. There's not a conflict. There's not, a, there's not one that's battling against the other. But indeed, what you have is you have the, the, the peace and the meekness and the gentleness of the Spirit of God that is showing itself through you. Also, the effect of righteousness is an assurance. It's a quietness. It's an, an understanding that I don't have to be riled. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to worry or fret about things. There's maturing happening inside of my spirit. There's growth transpiring inside of my spirit. And because of that, fruit is showing itself in quietness. In, in, in righteousness, in, in joy, and in a smile on your face, and, and in action that says, I'm okay, even though I'm in a bad situation, for an example. The third thing that I want to talk about is that there are signs and wonders, there are miracles, there are incredible workings that happen in the lives of people who have spiritual fruit growing in their lives. Now, keep in mind, um, what we are is more important than what we do. There are people who would consider someone to be very outspoken, very charismatic in their actions and their activities, but they do things that don't reflect the Spirit and the power of God. Uh, they may be good people, but something inside of the reflection is it showing itself as godly. Because of that, you have to understand something, that the miracle signs and wonders will not happen simply at your bidding, but they will happen in the spirit world as it's maturing and growing in you. Those are things that are guaranteed, if you will, for people who are hungry and thirsty for God. Now again, the process of growing an apple takes five years or so. Well, it might be that you're new in Christ and you're, you're beginning your walk with God and you're you're learning the word. You're learning how to fellowship with other uh, Christians. You're learning how to yield yourself to the working of God and in prayer and in believing and in scripture reading and fasting and whatever. You're, you're discovering your, your depth of growth in God. But it's not an overnight experience. It takes sometimes months, weeks, years even uh, for be things to show themselves. For you and I... Our patience with what God is doing has to sustain us. We have to understand, Lord, I'm new at this. I don't fully understand everything about what's going on. But one thing I do is I submit myself to you because I want spiritual fruit to show in my life. The fourth thing I want to talk to you about is the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. There's something happening in those who are hungry for God. There is an action happening. And when it, the scripture reveals us to, to hear to us in Proverbs, for example, chapter 11, it is revealing to us that knowing who God is gives you the ability to reproduce in soul winning. You win souls, you're wise. There is a working of wisdom in your life. Because you have grasped some of the concepts and principles of godliness, of, of following him and holiness and presenting yourself as a vessel that can be used in his hands, 
when you do that, they will, there will be fruit that is showing with the work that you're doing. Knowing full well that there are things that are happening that you may or may not understand, you may or may not see, you may or may not be able to speak of, but you trust that God is doing the work in your life. Therefore, you continue to move, you continue to go forward because you know that in time, fruit will show itself. Closing for this evening's lesson, I want to talk to you about just a couple more things that in your experience as a Christian, in you growing, and you're you're thriving, you're you're learning, you're you're maturing. Processes are happening in your life. You need to understand something that in spiritual fruitfulness there will be growth. If you give yourself to the things of God, you will grow. Also, there will be a healing that happens as you grow. This tree that supports this apple. Uh, over space of time, the tree itself may have cuts or the weather may have broken a branch or there may have been something that attacked it, a parasite. Things happen. Uh, healing can happen if you'll stay planted in God. You'll grow. You'll heal. Not only that, guaranteed, if you're doing what God is leading you to do, you will reproduce. And in the seasons of time, You'll grow, mature, flowers come, they turn to seed, they turn to fruit, it processes, it matures. When it finishes, the fruit comes off, the tree then goes through a season of losing its leaves, the sap begins to move itself to the, towards the earth, and then in the process of time after the leaves have fell off in the cold and the, in the dampness of winter, leaves will once again return and the cycle will happen over again. There's growth, there's healing, and there is reproduction to those who spiritually are maturing in God. Pray with me. Lord, thank you for allowing us to grow in your word. Thank you for allowing us to mature and to understand that fruit can show on our lives, in us, around us, and through us. We believe that your word planted within us gives us what we need because we're connected to you as the true vine. We are connected to you as we grow, we understand more about you, and we become stronger as we stay connected to who you are, to your word, to your church, to the body of Christ. I ask you to continue to lead us through our following lessons and give us guidance every step we take. We want to draw closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you next time.